Ciao e Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. So let's start this panel, which is the second last one. Back to technology. Now, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Rosella and the um, you know the, the speakers of the previous panel. Now, this is really really interesting. Now, I'm lucky enough now to have two bosses. Okay, I work in a matrix structure. My two bosses are Gabriella and another person in the UK, and I'm so lucky. I've had many, many uh, men as my bosses in my life. Having two women is a great value, and um, I'm really telling you the truth. Okay, I don't want to make any difference, but in my opinion, on some issues, on some topics, that uh, they really, really can do better. Okay, I hope you. You agree with me? Okay then, so back to sport for a second. Let me welcome Carlo. Now, uh, the guy with the scarf, as people nicknamed it. Okay, one scarf only, okay, I don't have mine today. Now, Carlo, um, well, many of us do know you for what you've done for 30 years. Okay, just tell us, tell us something more about this and about you. Okay, ciao, good afternoon everyone, thank you for having me here. I started back in 1987, so I started working in Delta 3, I've, I've always worked in that company till February the 1st, 2023, but I have never done the same job, because uh, after going to Imola in the racing track, I was there, you know, at the uh, finish line. I fell in love in 1994 of the web with Mosaic, and then I changed my, my life there. So I did something new, I've created new functions. So, new functions, new jobs, I invented new functions again, new roles, it was really, really interesting. So, uh, entertainment uh, and digital entertainment, uh, so uh, fun engagement, uh, and then NBC uh, Olympics in 2008, uh, so, uh, you know, streaming services. Now, I met you many, many years ago, and I think you are one of the most innovative persons I've ever interacted with and um, now uh, this is really really in real time so uh, can I can I have the first slide okay so I can answer your questions uh, there's one person that remembers uh, this uh, image Giovanni Pepe this was back in 1996 uh, with the the first uh, website of Dorna. I mean, there were three of us. Um, and uh, we also did all of the live results with a little Java application. I remember the three bikes. Of course, we replaced them uh, some years later with people we were fond of. So, incredible pioneering, um, you know, years. So, I've seen Dornam, so this is why I'm, I'm now doing some, let's say, archaeology of the past. You did something very risky, which is this what? Oh, no, no, we can do this. Uh, by the way, let me thank Alessandro, uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, he's the chairman. Now, this is an association doing networking. I mean, um, we want systems that work at best. So I was in the sport production uh, until you know ten years ago, and uh, this is something I've seen in Italy. Um, um, networking was missing here. Um, we missed some, let's say, personal relationships, but I mean, there was no, there was no proper networking in the system. Okay, we really missed it. While today things have changed, um, you know, we have many people coming from or representing this industry today. So my message is, let's let's improve networking. Now, of course, we have to have competition. In some cases, we are also competitors, but if we all work together, we all win. If we don't create a system, we will all lose. 
e quindi io partirei da questo dato che insomma ormai ti seguiamo tutti so this is my starting point um, con quello che scrivi hai fatto una SWOT so you created a SWOT italiano, on the Italian racconti, sports uh, broadcast market now with this SWOT analysis um, well I I, I think I didn't know so maybe I don't know the Italian market but it's difficult you know when you observe things you know from outside it's easy to see distinctive elements of Just one second back to your to what you said before, uh, creating a system or networking. I've always worked on the vendor's side, and the vendor's side is even worse. Of course there's competition, but there is no, there's no networking, there's no, say, common ground. If you want to create innovation, uh, you have to grow together. For example, if I say fun engagement, so in, uh, I'm sure you don't know exactly what this is, okay? Fun engagement. Then we do something at the stage. Stadium, then we do something digital you know there are you know there's no there are no there's no leading company um, so the sector let's say no one you know is working together so that we don't know which kind of market this is Okay, as for the SWOT, S-W-O-T, okay, there's a sort of a QR code here with pseudo-chrome, I don't know if it works, maybe you're sitting too far away. Anyway, um, I said, okay, let's start from macro topics, and then we can see that, you know, these topics may be, may be adapted to the Italian market. Now, uh, these topics are very complex, as you can see here. Uh, I think we will also be talking about this in a few minutes. I mean, uh, media rights, especially in sports. Uh, this is, you know, uh, one of the uh, most, uh, let's say, spoken about things. Maybe you have read all of the PDF documents of Serie A. Huh? So, you know, top level is going up, medium level is very small, so they have to look for new options, even if the possibilities in terms of distribution are very uh, many, so it's a complex situation. Now, streaming services, and once again, I really believe in this, Maybe some people don't like this, so I mean, streaming people are now maybe uh, overdoing or doing too many things. Anyway, here in Italy, with that on, well, that was a big shock, even for the audience. I mean, it was difficult at the very beginning, then we also had problems. Now, of course, uh, this strategy, so this was a concept we talked about eight, maybe ten years ago. So I don't know if this is sustainable together with many other media groups, together with the media rights issue. Anyway, this is a transformation. If you work here, if you live here, you have a sort of a headwind, I mean a problem. So big tech started doing what uh, they shouldn't have done. So when uh, Apple MLS uh, signed a 10-year agreement, uh, so they have sort of removed a piece of the market, I mean, from the global arena. So there are many, many different layers, so people are selling, then reselling, then purchasing. Anyway, big tech was uh, a big impact or gave a big impact to the market. Uh, this may be a conundrum for those who are working with Disney, uh, SPN, maybe I don't think they know exactly what to do, especially for you here. The fact that the most entertainment part, or the cross-pollination between pure sport and entertainment, is this a key need to reach a vast audience? Well, drive to survive and many other things. So sports series are the way to get into a market. For example, chat GPT, many of the things it says are not correct and I don't believe in it. 
Now, this is something that happened since, you know, last year, uh, Netflix told us that uh, it was not growing. We can do fast, the people said. Now, this is a sort of a step backward. Maybe people don't, don't like it, but... So, what's other than fast? Um, key platforms, just like Netflix, so subscription-based. I pay the subscription and I can see the content. Avod is the advertising-based one. So I may pay less, like Netflix today, or I don't pay. Anyway, it's a streaming platform. So there's a balance uh, in the hybrid model. So, and the pure subscription system. Fast means creating a linear channel with plenty of advertising with a streaming system. So, free ad services. So, going back, but, you know, putting up new technology, it's it, it's very successful because people understand that they can reuse a huge content. Maybe with discovery it's difficult, I mean, to look for the movie, you don't remember the name. But in linear programs, you can have, you know, programs and even EPGs. Now, this is successful because people are monetizing. Um, quite often, you know, as you know, you earn money by taking the content and selling it to distributors. So, Samsung TV and so on and so forth. So, pay TV, fight back. So, you know, pay TV is said, well, this is our job. For example, in 2008, we had the first streaming with NBC Olympics. We went to Mr. Romero in Madrid and we said, can we do this together? He said, well, no. And then after two Olympic Games, uh, he told me that's my job. And I said, I told you we had to do this together. Sometimes it takes time, you know, you really have to, you know, to keep, I mean, to embrace things. So maybe you have to have someone else do it for you. Anyway, back to Italy. As for strengths, now, passion for sports that we have in this country, so, uh, we talked about Serie B in the first panel, production level is now very high, so in this country there's a very, very high level, advanced level. Just look at the wealth of offer, I mean, I can really, really watch so much sport. Because of pandemic, I mean, this business is sort of, you know, uh, is waking up. So people understood that there are many different ways to be used to watch contents. So this is an interesting market. So look at the new entrants, for example. As for the weaknesses, uh, uh, fragmentation. Now, yes, so there is fragmentation because today's world is fragmented. Maybe there's a missing leader. I mean, I heard people, you know, uh, in, in sports. So I was listening to people around me saying, okay, I will buy Sky because I want to watch sports. So there's plenty of, uh, you know, fragmentation. Uh, there's not just one, two options. Maybe the risk uh, in terms of consumers is that consumers are now lost. Okay, I want to watch sports. Okay, so some years ago it was easier. Okay, you have Sky Glass, so this is an aggregator. Okay, so there's no fragmentation, there's aggregation. Right. So, you've seen this when Dazom started, you know, I use apps and sometimes I get a little nervous. My father is 87, he uses plenty of technology, he was a black and white photo reporter, you know, sometimes we are lazy and uh, maybe some people have a, you know, classic background and people say, I don't understand mathematics. 
So it depends on the relationships you have with generations around you, and I hope this is a transient problem. All four opportunities, media rights innovation. Now, the system now is quite innovative. I mean, the rights can be five years. I keep talking about football because football is defining, still defining the market, in my opinion. So, the A-League or Serie A, you can go direct to consumer. I think this is interesting. Maybe this is kind of awkward for someone, but it's still interesting because it develops a different dynamics. One of my dreams is that uh, sport, you know, the league, uh, UEFA, FIFA, you are great in producing, but you have a bundle of things that you do. Sport, in theory, may have all the capacity to have the best football coverage or NFL coverage. You know, they buy the rights and then they miss the rights. So. So, uh, MLS and Apple, I hope they will do something innovative. Uh, I hope they will you know, spend many years together and that they are two big companies. You talked about the remote production, it's moving forward. So, there are plenty of distribution channels. It will be easier to produce plenty of sport, or maybe better sport, always available. So, we've also worked on anti-piracy. As for the threats, now, if Italy doesn't go to the World Championship well, there we have the economy, there we have violence, the racism in the stadium. Now, some people may not want to go. So, the right to consumers, they should be doing this with live systems. It may be a big shock for many people. Now, as for the Serie A, uh, okay, we can skip this uh, recap. Let's say that, yes, we will have more opportunities, okay? We can skip this. We also touched uh, uh, very quickly uh, a key point on streaming. What do you think about the streaming quality level right now in terms of quality of experience? Is it acceptable? Now, I'm sure you, uh, you really believe in the quality of videos and this is one of your headaches. For example, in my opinion, uh, I, I like, you know, a discovery experience, uh, nothing is interactive, I mean, you know, uh, commercials cover everything. Maybe we have to be brave, we, we are not brave enough in terms of innovation. Uh, shit happens to everyone. It happened to Netflix, it was streaming only, and if streaming doesn't work, and then it happened to many other, uh, Amazon Prime for example. So, streaming live sports is not easy.com. Uh, this is from John Oliver. I mean, he creates uh, and takes the domain. It's really, really difficult. I mean, the, the value chain is complex. So, if you are used to the very complex broadcast world, it's okay. Things work. And things don't work here. In this case, the distribution is less deterministic. Okay then, so from streaming to innovation, you've always been a privileged observer, so is there something interesting out there? Maybe you remember this video from Adam Silver from NBA in the US. So he's shared this video. He scanned the person 3D, he puts uh, the person in the video and it becomes the video. There's plenty of things in the AR, VR world. We are technologists. We know what the hype curve is. It goes up and up and up and then down, and then there's a plateau where you, you start being productive. So, we were talking about metaverse and then NFTs and so on. Anyway. 
There are some things that, I mean, innovation is so fast-paced right now. Uh, Microsoft yesterday said, it's just like Mosaic in 1993, just like I found this is the real transformational moment. So humans are sort of slow to change habits. Uh, there are things that, that we adopted very quickly, for example, in Italy, with mobile phones, but then we still have radios. Innovation is a mix of speed and something crazy is happening right now. But then, you know, adoption rate in terms of mainstream is still quite slow. I don't want to disappoint you, but some things are not very technological. For example, King's League from PK. So um, it has been laughed at. Um, they tried to innovate football, um, you know, it's a different perspective. I mean, they didn't start from football, they started from the fans, so the influencers in the gaming part. How can we attract the audience that's, that, that which is used, I mean, to interact like this, turning the audience into the pitch? It's a sort of a reverse engineering of an experience. What is really breathtaking is that on April the 26th, they managed to have uh, 87,000 people in the camp now. So, seven players, uh, plenty of new rules. So, this means, well, we can do things in a different way. Wait a second, let's change the way we do things. For example, here in Italy, you know, during the pandemic, I said something like, why don't you do a match? Why don't you play against each other in a small pitch? It was basically impossible to do anything else. Uh, this year they do something uh, innovative, a sort of a U.S. tour. <laughs> Second innovative thing um, is the following. I talked to the manager and director and to the operation director of this uh, um, UK team. What is incredible there is the way monetization took place. You don't have Americans coming and purchasing a team. From the fifth league, they went up to the fourth league in the UK, but they did original series. So let's purchase a two million euros team plus extra money. They didn't know anything, so they took someone in the UK managing football. So 50% football, 50% entertainment. They purchased the team to tell a story. So they have spent a lot of money, but the idea was not just football. In a media group, in a broadcaster, uh, this is something that you've always had here in Sky. As for women's sport, now of course there's a huge potential, there's a missing storytelling, because not many people work on this. Once again, and they filled the cup. No, there was a record also in the UK a couple of weeks ago. There's a huge interest in this. I worked a lot with federations and I, I still see executive committees. I mean, there's one, one woman out of and then 20 men talking about women's sports. So we have to do things together all the time. Anyway. So, women's sports, let's invest in this, but we also have to have a different storytelling, creating something different. For example, the American Style League, again, this is what they did in the UK. So I think we can, we can risk a little bit more. As for Apple MLS, they did the multi-stream project that they have just announced. So let's see what happens. I mean, I'm sure you remember this. I mean, this is what we did many, many years ago.
As for uh, eSports, uh, uh, it was supposed to explode, but the New York Times say that this is not happening. I mean, it's okay, but there's no skyrocketing investments. I mean, some people are, are you know, disinvesting. Let me, let me now talk uh, about another topic. So uh, we don't have to be banal when talking about this. <laughs> now, very quickly, tell, tell us something more about this. So, we started AI in 1985. Uh, you and Gabriele, oh, okay. Okay, very briefly, this is not a university lesson. Now, AI is a sector which is very important. When we talk about machine learning, this is what we mean today. This is what newspapers talk about today. Uh, it was deep learning, which is based on neural networks. Uh, some years ago, people thought that they were useless, but they work very well, and they work much better than people thought. And this is why we are all scared. We have the discriminative AI, for example, face recognition systems. Okay, so I understand who you are. Generative AI is the contrary, okay? I take what I know and I create a face. Chat the GPT that's exploding, so this is what I mean, a very specific sector. There's always been AI, I mean, even in your mobile phones. Anyway, let's say it was the discriminative one. Right, it's a blend. Um, if you are a vendor, if you are in a media group, you need to understand the impact of generative AI. We don't know how it is. In 2022, I mean, everything, I mean, the hype went down. This one won't go down. Now, this is, um, for example, chat GPT. Now we can use it. Okay, I type something. This is the no code, okay? And then you have the low code. You know, I have a spreadsheet, and then, you know, I share this with the others. Code is developers, the deep code is the uh, AI developers, okay? What we need to understand, I mean, you, but also the vendors, it's the following. I mean, people, users, even creators, so the operators of your customers, for example, you have a, a dashboard, then they create a dashboard which are excellent, it takes less than four minutes. <coughs> we will use more advanced tools in the future, of course, but the intuition today, it's just like having a team of five people working for you, coming back the day after with the research already done. If you are smart, you can do this yourself. So users and creators who are your friends, but also, I mean, enemies. I mean, creators can steal a part of the audience as soon as they become smarter. But also vendors. Vendors will be empowered. I mean, people doing coding with co-pilots which is what Microsoft introduced yesterday, uh, what will change is the mechanics, if you will, of the professional society. It can change from within. So don't think of the hype. I want it, I don't want it, it will replace jobs. Well, we have to understand it so we can really understand the consequences of the impact, not just in terms of jobs. I mean, people working with you, this is something that may change. Maybe in one year we have forgotten this and we will be talking about something different. Anyway, let's say that all of this is much more sophisticated. Let me tell you what this is. This is no code. It has taken three minutes. Of course, I mean, this is not, not nice at all. It has taken less than three minutes, believe me. Can, I, can, we, can we share the first video? Well, it is a silly thing, basically, 
so it's one person that substitutes one of the characters. So I know that uh, some teams who have understood on a marketing level as quantity works better than quality, they say, oh, if I find something like this and then I use different characters, I have a lot of uh, content. So obviously you can do three minutes by saying silly things. This is uh, what I mean when I say when there's a team that helps you. Then there is another thing with an incredible quality. So I imagine the... Ricardo's family that in time would play football. So the dad, uh, you know, uh, in Inter, there's a plugin, I don't know if it's a plugin called New Journey that changes the face in an incredible way. Because basically, these technologies now can change 2D, 3D. You know, it took me a couple of minutes to take the pictures and 10 minutes in putting the names. You know, maybe I should speak to Mr. Panini because it's not a bad idea. Anyways, these technologies... Can you change slide, please? Yeah, this horrible, uh, obvious contents. Everyone can create them really quickly. It's a little bit uh, as if photography. Photography came and painting became art. So maybe there are problems of distributing wealth, but obviously technology is doing obvious things now. This is a low code, my friend Francesco. Who, uh, well, took some bits from ChatGPT. ChatGPT wrote the comment on an action. So there's a comment part, then the voice of Tyler, who is a... So, so, so ChatGPT took the voice of Tyler. If you want to put the second video on, this is a result. Martinelli rolls it into the net, and it's a goal. Arsenal takes the lead in the eighth minute, with Martinelli receiving the applause. A fantastic touch from Martinelli as Arsenal shows their brilliance in this game. Martinelli well, if you want, you can stop the, the video. So this is a concept. This guy worked for a few evenings and put together this thing that maybe he's not even going to use. But what is the concept? Imagine your people who know what they're doing. So we're talking about upskill and reskill. So if you have people, for example, who are not developers, but can put a few things together, they can create content that is maybe not broadcast content, but is content that amuses people. Right, we're done. So we're a few minutes late. Can I ask you a question? What, what did you like lately? Well, you know, now I have a trip for artificial intelligence. We have a chat, me and him and another called AI lovers. I would like to change the word lovers, maybe AI family. I don't know. Um, I really like the uh, generative AI. It's something that intrigues me because... I like the uh, sentence Harari said, said that this is hacking language. So if something can use language as or even better than man is interesting. I don't know. I don't know. This photo, for example, uh, I was listening to stuff on AI. Um, do, what do we do? Is AI going to kill us all? Do we regulate, not regulate? Can you see? This was called red flag legislation at the end of 1800. All the machines need a guy 
with a red flag to stay in front of the car to regulate the car that was going 20 uh, kilometers per hour. So this is a way of saying new technology is hurting us, is uh, harmful, let's regulate it with a red flag. So the, the topic that really fascinates me is how do we regulate well, we regulated cars, you know, we did safety belts, guardrails, etc. So I wanted to put this picture for two reasons. One is what are we going to do with this AI? And the other one is on the, um, in terms of exponential uh, topics, uh, chat GPT is going to look like that machine. So I don't know what is going to happen. But I am very optimistic on technology. So I'm going to leave you with this. Well, thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening.